How to Paint a Portrait in Watercolour Artwork by Vladimir London Part 3 How to Preserve White Paper When Painting Wet on Dry The previous variegated wash is fully dry by now. I will use the same six pre-mixed colours to make another wash on top of the underlayer. However, this time I will apply it not wet into wet, but wet on dry. The same painting technique is used this time as well. This technique is called the saw wash. I apply short diagonal brush strokes, overlapping every stroke with the previous one. This painting layer is optional for this artwork. The only reason I am making it is to demonstrate how to preserve white areas when making a variegated wash wet on dry. For this wash, I am using the medium-sized mop brush. This brush is made of natural squirrel hair and comes from a Skoda. It has a sizable belly and takes a lot of paint. Because it has a very pointed tip, it is easier to paint with such a brush with high precision. When needed, it is easier to make wide strokes with this brush. It releases paint in a controllable manner. You can see that I am not overloading this brush with paint, but continue painting rapidly so the painted edge doesn't dry. Every next patch of colour is mixed with the previous one easily. When I come to the area I would like to protect, I use very little pressure on the brush and only touch the paper with its tip. This way, I make very thin but precise lines. With a little bit more pressure on the brush, I make much wider strokes to continue the variegated wash. The board is tilted at about a 15 degree angle and wet paint slowly flows down, accumulating at the bottom edge of the painted area. This creates a nice juicy bead. It is important not to overload this bottom edge with paint so it doesn't run uncontrollably. Even though I am painting wet on dry, the borders between neighbouring colours are very smooth. This is because areas of different colours are still wet. They intermix directly on paper. As you can see, I am not using a palette to mix paints. Instead, I add pre-mixed colours next to each other, slightly overlapping the patches. The paint flows from one colour to another, making soft and diffused gradations. When two layers of variegated washes are applied on top of each other, you need to keep one rule in mind. The second layer can either enhance or mute the underlayer. If you apply similar colours on top of each other, for example red-orange and orange, the resulting warm colour will be deeper and stronger. However, if in two different layers you have visually complementary colours, for example yellow and violet or red and green, such colours will produce chromatic greys and will mute each other. You have to make the right decision about what you would like to achieve, to enhance some colour and make it stronger, or calm down this colour and make it more greyish. Both ways are acceptable, they only depend on what result you would like to achieve. As you may see in this artwork, I am almost repeating the same colours in the second layer on top of the underlayer. If the first layer has orange or yellow colour, 
I am applying the same orange and yellow on top. I mentioned before that this layer is optional, now you know why. I would easily achieve the same variegated wash in one layer applying stronger mixes of paint in one go. Nevertheless, it is a good exercise and I'm quite pleased with the result. The only purpose of these variegated washes is to make a multicolour background, filling it with almost random colours. The six colours I'm using have very little to do with the actual design. The left part of the variegated wash is almost complete. The excess paint at the bottom of this wash is absorbed with the damp brush. At the top, the painting layer is dry. That is why I'm carefully starting from the dry border using exactly the same colour. This way, there won't be any visible joins. I will continue the second layer of the variegated wash on the right-hand side. I will try to use the same colours as in the underlayer because I would like to increase colour saturation. If you are not fully familiar with colour theory, you can learn this topic in a fast and easy way in the Watercolour Academy course. In this academy, you will learn advanced techniques for using watercolours and trade secrets that are not taught anywhere else. There are actually two courses in this academy. The online course, which is a self-study, self-paced course where you can learn how to paint in watercolour by watching video lessons and doing assignments. And another course is provided by correspondence. In this correspondence course, you will receive personal tutoring, which is unlimited and custom tailored to your skills and needs. In the self-study online course, you will receive 80 video lessons on how to paint in watercolour. You will get a lifetime membership, which comes with personal support that includes answers to your art questions and critiques of your artworks. The correspondence course, however, is very different. It is arguably the best watercolour course available today. This is the only watercolour course where you can get unlimited, personal, one-to-one -one tutoring from professional artists and art teachers. It is truly unique because you will receive a custom-tailored curriculum according to your level of art skills. This curriculum will also take into account what your art goals are and what you would like to learn. No art college or university would ever provide you a personal curriculum. The team of dedicated art tutors will help you reach an advanced level of watercolour painting skills. Their tutoring is unlimited. This means that for a one-time fee, you will get lifelong tutoring until you achieve your educational goals. Within this curriculum, you will get 100 watercolour painting tasks, each task will come with in-depth, detailed instructions that you can follow step by step. You will get constructive critique of every artwork you do in this course. You can study in the comfort of your home at your own pace. There are no deadlines. Your membership will be for a lifetime. If you would like to dedicate your professional life to making fine art, this course will be very helpful in achieving your dream. The information and skills you will learn in the Watercolour Academy Correspondence course are not taught at contemporary art colleges. I have completed the second layer of the variegated wash and now it's time to decide on colours for the third layer. The background will be done in warm colours, 
I premixed three colors, yellow, orange, and red, and will use a slightly smaller natural squirrel hair mop brush to apply the third layer. Although this brush is a little bit smaller than the previous one, it holds a lot of paint and is perfect for the job of making juicy brush strokes as well as working small details. You may be wondering why I am not mixing paints on the palette but use pre-mixed colours as they are. There are several reasons for that. The amount of paint I pre-mixed will last me for the entire background, so I don't have to spend any more time on mixing colours on the palette. The second reason, which is more important, is that I have a much greater control on which colours I'm using. For example, if I would like to apply the same saturation of orange colour in various areas of this artwork, it is much easier if the colour is already mixed instead of making a new mix for another area of this artwork. Also, you may see that in some areas I am not using just one colour, but actually two. I start with one, for example red, and then add a second, like orange. If I start with orange, I end with yellow. In a way, I am making small, variegated washes, and for a wash I have to use pre-mixed colours. I wouldn't call filling such small areas washes, but the principle of applying different colour paints is the same. So, using this technique, you can fill the entire sheet or just a small spot. I am almost done with this layer. You can notice that yellow is applied in the center and it goes orange and then red towards the edges. This unites the whole background and it doesn't look like multicolored swatches anymore. To learn professional watercolor painting techniques, you can enroll in the Watercolor Academy course. To see if this course is right for you, you can check its free video lessons. The link for these free videos is included in the description below.